Good morning, afternoon or evening dear viewers. Welcome to the Baltic Aviation Academy Simulator Hall. We are here today for the second part of our questions and answers video. So I will try to answer a few more questions which you have sent us. So let's start. One of the questions which came from Owen. In the 747, are repetitive presses of the yoke stabilizer trim button required for large trim adjustments or can one just hold down the buttons until the desired amount of tr stabilizer trim has been set? Well, Owen, I can tell you that it is highly improbable that you will know the correct trim uh, in every situation, especially as there will always be a lag in the aircraft responding to the trimming. Therefore, holding the button in any position for too long a time will be unwise. However, it does not mean that you have to do very short repetitive presses. In every situation, the trimming technique might be different and you will learn this from experience. And all of this, the principle is the same in every aircraft with manual trim. Is it a 747 or is it a small Technum 2002? Another question from Owen. Are the large aiming markers on ICAO runways the most ideal region to land in? The answer would be yes, they are. And actually the three degree glide slope will be ending at the aiming markers. But the main objective though, especially on a large transport airplane, is to land in the touchdown zone, which will extend on runways longer than 2,400 meters, possibly 300 meters before the markers, and 450 meters beyond. This will differ depending on runway length, of course. And if landing before the aiming markers and touchdown zone, there is a good chance that you will not be able to clear the threshold at a safe screen height of 50 feet. Well, Badger sent us a question. Hi, what do you do and what procedures do you follow if you are flying VFR and become surrounded in clouds with no sight of land, sky or the horizon? Well, it is highly unlikely that you will lose the sight of land, sky or the horizon completely and suddenly with no way out. And if you would find yourself, for example, in a cloud or a shower of rain, trust your instruments, your attitude indicator, altimeter, vertical speed indicator, compass, turn indicator and so on. And get yourself out of the cloud, avoiding much movement, unless you know that you might be flying into terrain or possibly other traffic. And so after getting out of it, you can continue heading to your destination and if you think that this is impossible, head for your alternate or back to your origin. This is airmanship and you will de develop it, it together with your instructor and you'll gain it with experience. A question from Mr. Michael. If you are taken off from a long runway, can you reject the takeoff a little bit after V1? And even though it is rather likely that you will be able to stop safely in the runway distance remaining, it is not entirely sensible to try so. You must understand that the higher the speed, the more energy you have, the more energy will have the brake discs to absorb. And brake overheats have happened more than once. In some cases, the brakes can be cooled after after an inspection and maybe some maintenance, the airplane can be dispatched for another flight rather cheaply and quickly. But there is a great chance for the tires to blow, for the brakes to ignite and even worse to explode. So as a very wise captain said, the airplane is built to fly, not to row, so it is often better to take your problems into the air and solve them carefully, calmly, than to put an even greater risk to yourself, to your aircraft, to your passengers and cargo. As you might possibly guess, we have received quite a few questions about the MUI flight. And uh, well, many discussions can be developed about this topic and I'm sure that a lot of, the, a lot of them have been. And I want to note that Movies are based on the imagination of the director and the crew and in this instance they wanted to dramatize the whole accident and show the superiority of the captain. I would like to ask you, don't try this at home. 
A question from Mr. Wilson. How is Autoland touchdown vertical speed determined? That is, during an Autoland, does the autopilot aim for a certain touchdown point or a certain touchdown vertical speed? Well, as you probably know, the usual Autoland is done by following the ILS or instrument landing system guidance. And at about 45-50 feet above the ground, the airplane is disconnected from the glide slope signal and starts a gentle flare with the goal of reaching 2 feet per second descent or 120 feet per minute. At 5 feet above the ground, the Autoland goes into rollout and starts decreasing the pitch attitude. So the touchdown will occur at approximately 120 feet per minute or possibly a little bit more due to the pitch attitude reduction during initial rollout. As you learned already, the aiming marker is the point where the glide slope descends into the ground. So the touchdown will likely occur a little bit past the aiming markers in the touchdown zone. Mr. Rusko has sent us a question. Do you think the most common flight simulators can be used for theoretical practice? And are their flight dynamics similar to the real ones? Well, in my humble opinion, they can be used for theoretical practice, I mean to learn the correct operating procedures and flying principles. And as per flight dynamics, I have never tried a flight simulator with a realistic default airplane model. But purchasing an add-on aircraft with an addition of some add-on models and choosing, calibrating and tweaking the hardware can indeed make the flight simulator pretty realistic. But if you asked if as a flight simulator enthusiast you can land an airplane, my answer is don't get your hopes too high. You will not be used to the feedback from the flight controls and the visual sights and illusions which occur during flying. However, if you are adapting quickly, after a few minutes familiarization with the airplane, you might be able to get the bird back to the ground, even maybe safely. So thank you very much for joining us for this video. I hope that you got some of the questions answered and that something is clear for you. And uh, this will conclude our questions and answers video series. Next time, see you in the aircraft. Bye.